Welcome to Raw for Geekiness, Jonathan and Amanda, and we just got back from Cosplay, Cosplay America. America. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Cosplay America. So, Cosplay America was down near Raleigh Durham area of North Carolina, specifically in Cary, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, so we drove down there. That was quite the undertaking. That was a bit of a drive. Yes. Um, and Cosplay America is more so a con focused on the cosplayer, the maker, so it was comprised of a lot of workshops, a lot of panels focused on how to basically get your best cosplay on. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of one of the things that set this apart from a lot of the other events that we've been to before, and that there was a lot more making yes. uh, at this one, a lot more hands-on workshops, and I think we've seen at a lot of other events that we went to. And, I mean, we, we think we knew to expect that a little bit from, like, looking at the schedule and looking at um, the way the event is structured, but, like, actually, like, being there and being, like, in that space, like, that is really what it felt like, and that, that definitely set it apart from a lot of other events that we've been to. Um, and it was really refreshing. Like, I think, mm -hmm. I think those are definitely, like, those are our people, right? Like, that is what we enjoy yeah. about this hobby, the whole the making, the creating, and, like, that was the energy there. And despite the fact that it was a surprisingly small event in terms of attendance, there were probably less than 300 people there. Um, again, surprising because they pulled some pretty big guests from the community. Um, Last year was like Cowboy Crunchies, this year was like Pros and Cons, Down in Creative Studios, Down in Photography, um, like a long list of like people that, like if you've been in the community for any length of time, you've probably seen them or follow them, and there were a fair number there. Yeah. All of them teaching uh, classes, workshops, hands-on stuff, like, like you're really kind of like rubbing elbows with some of these people. Um, and that was a very unique experience um, amongst any event that we've been to now, big or small, so. Yeah, it was very interactive. Everyone was very receptive and friendly. And you know, I had questions for people who were presenting panels both during and afterwards, right? And I just went up to people and asked questions. Everyone was very helpful um, and seemed just interested in helping everyone who was attending be able to learn new skills or do what they wanted to do in terms of their cosplay. So I appreciated that. It felt very welcoming um, just by nature of the, maybe the intimacy of the event, how small it was. Yeah, very much. I think the, yeah, again, because we didn't entirely know what to expect from yeah. this one. We went with some, some pretty big projects. If you're following our other social media, you saw some of the builds that we were coming up with for this because we thought this was going to be like a pretty big event and mm -hmm. and we learned that right because of the workshoppy nature of this event that was that was not the right angle to take <laughs> i okay i'm gonna like counter yeah. that a little bit yeah. or add an addendum that, yeah so there were two types of workshop or panel experiences there were those that you could just show up for and were included in your ticket price and anyone could go to and then there were the paid workshops which were not particularly expensive or, uh, you know, uh, I think you were mostly covering materials by paying whatever fee. Yeah. But those were, generally speaking, the more involved workshops where you were doing things hands-on and potentially working with materials or things that might not be most conducive to an intricate cosplay. So uh, I learned a valuable lesson that you don't show up in your giant Sailor Moonish wig with rhinestones and a very intricate dress on to try to do resin casting just not a great fit um i knew this in theory but i don't think i had really thought through what would happen if i put on my my regalia and then went at noon on a friday to uh, a resin casting workshop so. right yeah and i th i mean yeah that's not to say that we didn't see some amazing cosplays mm -hmm. throughout the weekend but i'd say most people were putting those on in the evenings. So yeah. There were only maybe half the people in their cool stuff throughout the day. And again, probably people that were not doing 
painting or mm -hmm. casting yeah. or yeah uh, workshops that require like two hands and don't get me messy please <laughs> yeah I think it just totally depended on what you were going there for or what kind of workshops you wanted to sign up for I didn't actually go to any of the like LED or more electronics based workshops but honestly I probably would have been fine in whatever I was wearing because you're just working with with tools and materials that probably aren't gonna right like stain or ruin what you're wearing it's just a matter of unless you're sovereign fair enough anyway. but yes the point is you could you could show up wearing <laughs> really intricate stuff but you just have to be thoughtful about what you're then gonna opt into during the day that's all yeah and you you touched on the fact that the you know, again there were additional workshops that you could sign up for mm -hmm. those were an additional fee which Again, like you said, they were those were reasonable fees. They really totally. were just covering materials, I think, for a lot of those. And and the ticket price for the event was low enough that it didn't feel like, oh man, like this is a major outlay uh, to also to to do some of the extra things right. um, that were included in the event. The tickets were probably some of the most reasonably priced tickets of any event we've been to, yeah. um, especially when you're talking about the caliber of the the sessions and the panels and the workshops involved yeah. uh, here compared to, I don't know, you know, local, local event sort of ticket price. Um, and the hotel where it was also had, yeah, were, was really probably some of the best hotel rates we've had in a while, which was yeah. again, surprising because this, they were all suites. So we had, mm -hmm. you know, we had our bedroom and then there was a kitchenette and a suite and all of that was included in yeah, probably one of the best hotel prices we've paid for an event in the last two years. Totally. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of like like cash outlay to go and enjoy this event, it was it was a steal. I mean, yeah, really, like totally quite reasonable. honestly, like it was very very reasonably priced, um, maybe too reasonably priced, almost. Uh, uh, yeah, I, don't give them ideas. <laughs> I know. I mean, I, I, they, they could jack their ticket prices yeah. up a, a little bit, and it would still feel worthwhile, I think. Um, and, yeah. and yeah, I think there is a little bit of a scale. Like, there are discounts if you buy your tickets well enough in advance versus at the door. But the difference in those isn't like, uh, like going to break the bank kind of pricing either if you're not going to buy your tickets a year in advance. Yeah, a couple things about the paid workshops. Number one, I'd say the couple that I went to, totally worth it very reasonably priced. I, I learned a lot. I enjoyed it. So I would say if you're wanting to learn some new things and you have the disposable income to sign up for some workshops, like I found it a very worthwhile uh, endeavor. But I will say I didn't love two grapes about it. I didn't love that when I went to sign up for the workshops ahead of time, it didn't tell me. I don't believe I could be wrong, but I don't believe it told me when you were signing up for t the tickets or buying them in advance how long the workshop was. So I actually ended up buying tickets for things that were like almost, they were butting up against each other or overlapped. Um, I didn't end up going to one of the workshops because it conflicted. Um, so that's just one thing that I would have been nice to like see in advance. And maybe I could have seen it on the schedule, but if they could actually show it, when, like it kicks you out right to a, a ticket buying right site when you go to buy the tickets in advance for the workshops, it would have been nice to see the length of time so I could actually know, oh, I probably shouldn't sign up for this other thing. Um, the yeah. other one more thing on that I'll just say is um, that I, I noticed that like some of the things I would have signed up for were like almost immediately sold out and I'm not sure if that's because that was all the tickets. I think you said maybe they were only selling a portion online ahead of time. Let me, I'll move there. Um, <laughs> but like when I went, it was literally I think hours after they had opened up the ticket sales and like all the like I would have love to have gone to the embroidery session um, that was being held. There were a few different workshops that were just already gone. Um, so I, I don't know what the workaround for that is, but that was a little bit of a bummer feeling like, oh, I tried to jump on here pretty quickly and the tickets are already gone. Well, they did comment on that because I think it used to be that you had to buy all the tickets when you got on site. So the people that got on site on Thursday, like just bought up all the stuff and mm -hmm. you couldn't get into their workshops. So that's why they did make half the tickets available online mm, ahead of time okay. and the others you could buy at reg okay. uh, when you got then there that's on me. <laughs> so yeah but i think like if you weren't following their social media ahead of the event you might not have caught that either yeah. um so so that 
I don't think that was mentioned anywhere on the website. Just like you pointed out the schedule, there was a list of all the classes on the schedule. You could go and look at them. They had their start times, but they didn't have the end times. So I think you then had to also download like the a PDF, PDF that yeah. had the grid, which is an extra step. If you're just looking at the schedule on your phone and scrolling through things, yeah, like just even having like, you know, in parentheses, two hours, like after the time, yeah. the start time of, of a particular panel or something probably would have been helpful for people who are just kind of trying to scroll through the list really quick as opposed to, oh, now I need to open up the grid. And, and they were updating the schedule too mm -hmm. throughout the event. So like, you know, even if you downloaded the PDF, yeah, like, like, yeah, it would have been easier to just have it on the web page. Be like, let me refresh the web page, see if anything's been added or changed. Yeah. Minor, 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 great. minor, 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 great, but yeah, like, like, like you said, especially by the time they're, they're kicking you off of the website to the registration site for the tickets, you might like, unless you'd opened up another tab yeah. somewhere or something, you might not have the, the, the information about that, the timing ahead in front of you. So yeah, it might've been nice to have it there when you were buying those tickets too. So. Yeah, and I'll say too, the, I went to a couple of workshops which were free and were really valuable. Um, I will plan on, I still plan on finishing the sloper that I started. So um, that's something that you usually have to take right, uh, more advanced classes for, and I'm sure it's still going to be a challenge to do it essentially on my own. But the fact that there was someone there kind of walking us through the process and explaining what things need to happen in order for you to really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, refine your sloper was really helpful. So I, I think you could show up to this, not take any additional workshop classes, which you didn't, correct? Um, yeah, so yeah. I think we both had really good experiences, even though, like I signed up for a few things additional, so. Yeah, no, I, I went to some of the other panels or the, like you said, I guess they were the, the free workshop. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I, f I feel like I got just as much out of the yeah. event as you did, so yeah. there, can compare and contrast experiences. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think my only two gripes about the event, again, they were small, were, were around the food. Um, we went to, we started off the event by going to the How Do I Cosplay America panel, which was put on by the programming director, so he made the point there, and I'm pretty sure he made the point again during opening ceremonies. Our event schedules in food breaks, and to their credit, there was a break every day for dinner. Unless you were in the cosplay contest, then you had to be showing up for stage in there. But they did have food available for the cosplay yes. contest participants. So I guess you're covered there anyway. Kudos, yeah. Kudos, yeah. That's that's not usually something you find in green rooms. So like that was cool. Or I guess our experience with green rooms at cosplay contests is non-existent. But <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, good stuff. Um. The, and, but there was also only lunch blocked out on Saturday. There was not lunch blocked out on Friday and Sunday. <laughs> Which, I Looking think... Looking at you, no. Uh, I mean, again, like for any other convention that's not going to block out any time and just like figure out what you're going to miss to go eat if you feel like you need to eat. Like, you know, it's not, not different. But like when you're going to say that we do it, and then you don't. Mm. Yeah, I think... I think that would have felt less frustrating too if it hadn't been for the combination, which you were probably going to get to this point too, the fact that the hotel had, first off, the hotel had a great breakfast, I think, for, you know, every day that's included with your stay. Mm -hmm. um, and that was fantastic. But the supposed lunch uh, restaurant that was supposed to be open was not open. And so yeah. not only was there not a scheduled break, but also there was a combination of suddenly realizing oh, well, we need food, and we apparently can't just, like, hang here and grab something. Easily. Right. And I, and I, I wouldn't put that on the event, no, except no. that Cosplay America did put on their website that there is a hotel restaurant open for lunch and dinner, and here's the link to their lunch menu, and here's the link to their dinner menu, and it's on their event website. So if you're reading the event website, you're going, cool, there's food on site for lunch. A, don't need to take off half my costume to walk a block away and get, you know, fast food. Um, and then when that's just not open, it's like, okay, well, there went our plan for lunch because we've got 
half an hour before the next session yeah. that we want to go to starts. So that was that was an inconvenience. I mean, many other guys have definitely been at events where there's no food on site at all for anything. So you know, uh, but yeah, my gripe was that it was on the event website that there should be food and there wasn't. And maybe there was last year and something fell through this year, there was a miscommunication or something, maybe there will be next year because we're griping about it now, who knows. Um, but yeah, that was that was our experience this year and so that was minus half a point, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, on that note, since you said maybe there will be next year, I would absolutely come back to this event. I really had a good time. Uh, I learned I learned a lot for how minimally I think I went to things where necessarily I would have done some hands-on learning. Uh, I will probably go back next year and wear some kawaii ears and like wear some very like comfortable clothing for like a good portion of the day because I just really want to enjoy all the like expertise and skill that was being offered through the different classes whether that you pay for those or not I feel like that was being offered everywhere. So um, yeah yeah no uh, the in general the community yeah. was very very open very uh inviting very knowledgeable very and knowledgeable yeah it was it was a really good time i and i saw some stuff too i think because we're still newer to cosplay we've had the experience of you know we're both pretty invested in trying to make things look good but um we saw some incredible stuff oh up gosh. person you know up close and in person that uh i just don't think we would have gotten the chance to to see or interact with as much at big, right at bigger cons, you kind of see someone with their fantastic cosplay, and you go, "Wow!" from a oh. distance, and yeah, it, there it goes. Um, whereas, like <laughs> the people wearing the really awesome cosplays were also the people running these panels, right, or presentations, or just sitting in on things. Yeah. So actually, being able to go up and go, "Wow!" like that's amazing, and like, how did you do that thing, right, or what's <laughs> happening here, or, like, was was really awesome. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So, so given that, what would you rate Cosplay America? Oh man, I really enjoyed it. I, it's weird, I think the farther we've gotten away from the event, which is not that far at all, but the more days that have passed, the more I'm like, yeah, I really am looking forward to next year. So I think I give it a solid, like, I don't know if I'm going to regret this, but like a solid 9 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. What about you? I think I'd give it a 4 out of 5, and again, I think... <laughs> Yeah, like there were a few minor things, but like overall, very solid event, a uh, very good experience, a uh, very good community uh, at the event. I I would love if it was closer. Um, yeah. That's not something that they can do anything about. Um, it'd be cool if there was something like this closer to us. Yeah. Maybe, that's the maybe, only bummer. Maybe, maybe we, yeah, maybe we make that happen. Maybe, maybe whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah, other uh, yeah, I, th I don't have a ton of complaints. Like you said, we covered the minor grapes. I think there were a lot of positives, and in terms of like investment of time and money, it definitely felt like it was a huge payoff. So. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I mean the drive could be shorter, but <laughs> once again, that's not that. on anyone. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's, that's not on that's not on the event. That's on that's on us, and yeah. maybe we don't drive next year. Yeah. Yeah, so Cosplay America, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. So until next time, I, we don't have a die handy, so I'm just going to use a die rolling app on my phone here. Twelve. All right, where's our table? And remember, kids, pack snacks. Especially if you don't want to have to go through the Wendy's drive-thru in your clown makeup. Thank you.